This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I'm going to explain how you can import assets as Encore elements, such as timelines, slideshows, and menus. So to do that, let's make a new project. So just double click on the icon, and we'll make a new project. And we'll store it inside the Encore exercise files. We'll call this one Elements if you like. Call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it Elements. Take the defaults here and go OK. Now we have a blank slate. So there are two ways to import assets as Encore Elements. One is to go File, Import As, and there are these six things that you can bring them in as. Or you can right click anywhere inside the project panel in an empty space here and go Import As, and there'll be five things here missing that menu page thing. So we'll take the standard way first. We'll go File, Import As, and I want to start with a timeline. So we'll start there. We'll bring in multiple timelines. I'm going to back up a notch here to go to the Working Files folder, Digital Juice Edited Footage subfolder. I have a bunch of different video and audio files here. I'm going to start out with one that has both video and audio in it. That's this MOV file, the QuickTime file, which you can see has video and audio because of the icon. It's got a little musical note and a film strip there telling you that this is both audio and video. So now that I'm importing as a timeline, I can select it and click Open, or just double click it. And then it comes as a separate file. There's the file. And as a timeline, here's a timeline with the audio as a separate track. It's not split off, it just is a separate track there in the timeline. Now I want you to look off to the right here inside the project panel. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in an upcoming tutorial. But if you look to the right there, you're going to see something called DVD transcode status, like that. If you go farther to the right, you'll see Blu-ray transcode status like that. There we go. And you see that it says untranscoded and that it's going to be automatic. So when you bring in a QuickTime file, it's not transcoded. It needs to be transcoded before it's put on a Blu-ray disc. All right, let's go on and get some more assets as elements. Go File, Import As. Go down the timeline again. This time I want to take two files and bring them in at once because all the rest of these video clips here have their audio split out as separate video files. So we'll go down here to the Wildlife M2V file, which is an MPEG-2 for DVD, not for Blu-ray, but for DVD. And then we split off its audio as a WAV file. We also split it off as an AC3, Dolby AC3 file. But I'm going to work only this time with the WAV and the M2V file. So I'll click on this one here. I'll control or command click on this one or shift click on it to pick two contiguous clips. There we go. I'll click open. And what happens is that those two guys are put down in a timeline like this, where you've got the audio file and the video file, separate files here, but they're just two different tracks, essentially, just like they'd be in Premiere. And then the two files are up here. If you drag that over to the right a little bit, you'll notice that the MPEG video does not have to be transcoded, because it was intended to be put on a DVD. So there's no transcode here. It'll go directly to the DVD without any transcoding. And it also will go to Blu-ray, because it's MPEG-2 compatible for a DVD, it's also going to be compatible, sort of like upstream compatible for Blu-ray. So there'll be no transcoding for the MPEG-2 file, but there will be transcoding for the audio file. It will need to be transcoded to a compliant format. All right, let's go to get some more assets. But I'm going to right-click this time in this empty space and go Import As Timeline. This time I'm going to get something with an AC3 file. We're going to go for this MPEG-2 clip. This is MPEG-2 for Blu-ray, so it's a higher quality clip. I'll select that and I'll select the AC3 version here as well. So I'll control click on that one and click open. And that comes in as those two files too, the Scenic AC3 and Scenic M2V. Right now you slide to the right, you'll notice that it says the MPEG is not transcoded. It needs to be transcoded for DVD. It's basically, you know, higher quality, too high a quality for DVD. So it needs to be sort of down converted to play the DVD, but it does need to be down converted to play a Blu-ray. It is in fact a Blu-ray compliant file, as is the audio. A Dolby AC3 audio file will play on an MPEG-2 or a regular DVD file. So you see, don't transcode there and don't transcode there. Very good. I want to show you one more thing. We go right-click here again, import as a timeline. I want to go inside this AVCHD folder. I've got three little AVCHD clips. I shot these clips with an HD camcorder as AVCHD files, and you see the file format is MTS. Well, AVCHD files are directly compliant with Blu-ray. They will play off Blu-ray without any transcoding for the most part. Not all AVCHD files are compliant, but these particular guys are. And these guys are taken straight out of the camcorder, untouched. So I'm going to take the first one and have that be a timeline. If I picked all three, I'd make three timelines. I want to make only one timeline here, like that. Open. 
and there it is called the AVCHD timeline. And if I look at that to the right, you'll see that under the DVD status, it needs to be transcoded for DVD, but off to the right, it does not need to be transcoded for Blu-ray. It will play directly on a Blu-ray disc, no transcoding needed. And what's cool now is I can import the other two guys as assets. I'll just double click here because that opens up the import as asset dialog box. I'll select these other two by clicking on one and control clicking or command clicking on the other one. Bring those two in. I can add them to this timeline like this. It'll put chapter markers at the point where I added them. Move this up a little bit so I can zoom out so you can see it all. Take the third one and add it. And now I've created a timeline, perhaps for a client who wants to see all the stuff we did that day, and I can ship him a Blu-ray overnight, which has a lot of files on it. Don't need to, let's say, upload this to a server or something. I can make a Blu-ray fairly quickly and get that to the client, and he has all these dailies on here that have been untouched. They're in their original pristine state, no need to transcode them. So that's one of the cool things you can do when you work with AVCHD files inside Encore. Let's talk about importing other elements. We'll right-click a little bit of empty space there. Go Import as Slideshow. I'm going to go get the images for the Slideshow by backing up a notch, going to Digital Juice Edited Footage, going to Still Images, and here's a whole bunch of images. I'll pick the first one and go down and pick the last one by shift-clicking on it. Notice the different file types you can work with in terms of still images, BMP, Target, TIFF, JPEG, Photoshop, Ping, all sorts of different image file types that you can work with inside Encore. We just have TIFF here. I click Open, and it brings in all 21 clips and creates a slideshow named after the first image. So the slideshow is called Scenic Image 1 because the first image in the list was Scenic Image 1. You can change the name of the slideshow later. I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming tutorial. Let's move on down the line here and bring in something as a menu. So again, I can right click in this little bitty free space there and click Import as a menu. I've got a bunch of menus here that we're going to work with with some upcoming tutorials. I'll just select the scene index here and just double click on this. And that will not come in as a separate file. It comes in only as a menu right there. Here it is. And there's the menu showing up here in the menu viewer. Now the last thing is that to import as a page. Now if I right click in an empty space here, and say import as, that page option won't even be here. If I go over here and go file import as, there's the menu page option, but it's grayed out. It's inactive. I can't get to it. So what's going on here? Well, when you import a menu page, it needs to be associated with a multi-page menu. And a multi-page menu is something that can be seen only in a Blu-ray disc. It's an option in Blu-ray discs. So I'm going to go back to this menu we just brought in. I'm going to select it. With it selected, I'm going to turn it into a multi-page menu by simply going up to Menu, Add New Page. And when I do that, you notice the icon now has a second layer to it, indicating that this is now a multi-page menu. So if I click away from this and go File, Import As, that guy's still grayed out because I need to make sure that that menu is active. So now I'm going to make it active. Go up here, File. Import as, and now it's active. I'm going to go back and import another version of that file. Just click it again. It'll add it as a second page to this index right there. I can see the second page here. I can click to that page, or click to a different page. So this is the page we added. It's blank, and this is the page we just added by importing it there. So we've got three pages essentially. We've got the original page plus that blank page we added to make it into a multi page document, and then the one we just imported a second ago. So this is now a three page menu. We can delete that blank page if we want to, but that's the process to add a page using the import as an element process. So there are several different options in terms of importing assets as elements. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can import things via Adobe Dynamic Link.